I testify before the House Foreign Affairs Subcommittees on Europe and Africa on the subjects of Russia's activities and influence in Africa. Particularly through military engagement, we see Russia developing a lot of relationship with various countries. But these relationships are not new. Russia, in the days of the Soviet Union, stood alongside a lot of African countries as these were fighting for independence from colonial powers. Now the Russians are back trying to call on their friends across the continent. This, of course, puts an onus on the United States, especially when we consider the Ukraine war we saw during the UN resolution vote. Not all African countries voted the same way. Why did the countries in Africa not align themselves with the West or with the United States? This is because the U.S. is not engaging Africans directly. It's because they're going through the former colonial powers. That is a disadvantage. The House Foreign Affairs Committee should consider changing the way that the U.S. approaches Africa. The U.S. needs to seek to understand Africa's views and respect their agency and their choices, and then use that to propose better deals to the Africans. The United States should also give African leaders the consideration that they deserve. When African leaders visit Russia or China or any other part of the world, they are received with all the honors befitting their ranks. When they come to America, they barely, rarely are seen at the White House. That means Africans feel disrespected by the United States. So when the U.S. comes calling for their support, the U.S. does not get it. The U.S. should not be in the business of chasing shining objects across Africa, whether it's China or Russia or any newcomer. The U.S. need to focus in its long-term goal and objective and engage Africans accordingly. For more on my testimony and this critical issue, please visit CSIS.org.